Jaden, I'm in Chicago right now. As you know, I just got to have dinner with our friend Logan Kilpatrick over at Google and came away unbelievably impressed, as usual, with Gemini, with Google. And Google just is not slowing down. Jaden, you and I were talking just offline about like how they're not playing catch up, anything like that. All they're doing is sort of keeping a lot of powder dry and doing some amazing, amazing stuff. And so today, I thought we could talk about this because Jaden actually knows way more about this stuff than I do. And I kind of wanted to pick his brain on it. First of all, about Opal, which is Google's new, it's like a no-code vibe coding tool. And that is, uh, I don't know if it's out yet or anything like that. And then also they had this cool thing that Jaden was telling me about before. This, uh, it's like the Google web guide search. And this is something I really want to dive into because this seems like really, really cool. But Jaden, first of all, I'd love to get your take on this. Also because um, Jaden's AI box is exploding. AIbox.ai, guys, if you haven't done this yet, 20 bucks a month, you get access to literally all the models, Claude, ChatGPT, Gemini, Grok, everything. And for 20 bucks a month, all you have to do is just go on AIbox.com and you can actually compare models. It is the best $20 a month you can spend considering how much I'm spending on all this. But this is one of the reasons that I wanted to ask Jaden about this because he dives into this stuff a lot. Jaden, sorry, very long intro out of me, but would love to hear... Um, how sort of like, first of all, like what you're experiencing on AI box also just sort of like to sort of, you know, what models are sort of going against what models and all that kind of stuff, because Gemini seems to be killing it, especially now with the release of Opal. So anyway, where do you want to go with this? Because I'm curious. Yeah. Okay, so that is an interesting point. I, I, I do have a pretty, uh, I do have a good insight. I feel like from AI box, the first product we have launched, we have some cool stuff coming in the future. But yeah, it's basically a platform that lets you try all of the different AI models. But basically the interesting thing for me is that we get the data on what AI models are the most popular because I feel like when you listen to the news or podcasts or influencers or anything, you'll hear a lot of hype about certain AI models. I think, and then when you look at the actual usage, like what I'm seeing people are actually using on here, it's sometimes it's like in a big contrast. One of those examples that might surprise you is I, I feel like I hear so much hype about DeepSeek all the time. Everyone likes to point to it as like the boogeyman, like, look, China's had this viral model that's overtaking America. Deep seek usage, very, very small. Um, I talk a lot about uh, one of my like, it's kind of like one of the models that I love the most, Mistral, very low usage on it. But anyways, one that we have been really surprised by is Google Gemini 2.5 Pro um, really has come out of the gate and as a very, very popular model. And so um, it's no surprise that they're not playing catch up. Like you mentioned, they, they really are like kind of at the forefront. Now they're not the number one best model right now, according to the benchmarks, new companies are coming out all the time. I think Grok recently beat a whole bunch of benchmarks with their Grok four, despite all the controversy. And then I think we probably are going to be seeing something pretty impressive out of OpenAI soon. But of course there's just like hype and they like to, they like to do a lot of hype there. So I'll save it for when something's actually launched, but, um, Google definitely is at the top of the pack right now. So a really cool product that they've rolled out. Uh, because of this is called um, Opal. So Opal is basically their new vibe coding app. And it's, so we have a bunch of competitors in the space. And Connor, I know you were, uh, you were recently talking to a whole bunch of people about vibe coding. This isn't something you do, correct? Correct. Yeah. I've, I, it's, and it's so funny. So our friends like Logan, Ali Miller, all these folks are always like, Connor, you got a vibe code. I'm like, I'm just not a big vibe coder, but everybody is in on this except me. I mean, I know about it because I have to for my work, but I don't actually yeah, yeah. do it. And so I think what's interesting is like you are not uh, like an anomaly in this and especially, okay, someone like Logan, his background is in development. So of course he's going to be saying that you should. Um, right, fair, fair. Personally, I'm not doing a ton of vibe coding either if I'm being 100% honest. And I also just saw a viral Twitter thread. So the, the, all I, I say this to say, lots of people are going to say everyone should vibe code. And I actually think it's like a good thing. Everyone should try it out. It's pretty cool. You go to Lovable. I have played with Lovable. You go ask it to make like a web page. It can pull something out. But I do think that at the, at the moment, there is a, a moat between kind of like hype, what it could and should and someday will be able to do and mm -hmm. what it's currently able to do and mm -hmm. how difficult that is for technical or versus non-technical people. So basically, there's a whole bunch of tools. Uh, cursor, definitely more developer focus. Lovable, a little bit simpler. You go to Lovable, they just raised $200 million at a $1.6 billion valuation. So it's a, it's a really fast growing company. You go to Lovable and you tell it to, you know, create a web page for you or something. And it will, it'll be able to do that. Now, you can't build full on applications. Like it's not building you out a back end. It's not doing anything like super crazy, but it can do these, some basic things. And the thing that I've seen people use Lovable for and other tools like it, a lot of vibe coding tools, is um, basically they'll create like a concept 
it where it can it looks right they give this to a developer and then the developer can go and actually tie everything together and also right. make it work because if there's right. a bug uh, like most of us vibe coders if you're super new do not know how to fix that bug is you know if you have no experience in this so the more experience you have the more lethal you are with these tools and i'll get into all of that but um so lovable's kind of been the big one and it now looks like google is jumping in on this which is pretty exciting a, cool, a couple cool things that google's going to be allowing you to do is basically you'll be able to create mini web apps. You can do this using text prompts. So you prompt it to do something. Something that I love that they're doing is you can remix existing apps. So they have like a gallery of like things people have made. You can take it and remix it, which is really cool. Um, and all you have to do is basically describe what you uh, what you want it to do. Now it uses um, four different apps to do this. And this is exciting to me. They're using Gemini 2.5. So for all the text and code and all that kind of stuff using image and force, they can actually generate images inside of these apps. They're using audio LM. So you can do audio files inside of them and VO their video. So because Google has the full suite of tools, um, you basically can create apps that have kind of everything built into them, which is kind of exciting. Um, so yeah, this is exciting. Uh, for me, I I'm really interested in this space. The next tool I'm building over at AI box is kind of a no code AI app builder. This is kind of the concept. Um, and you can imagine it probably going to be something fairly similar to what Opal's doing, except that will allow you to use every AI model from every AI company to build these apps or tools versus like Google's going to just be with their tools. OpenAI might have a version with just their tools. Uh, Claude Code is just their tools. So if you wanted access to, you know, maybe Google's got the best video and OpenAI's got the best image and Claude's got the best code, we'll build something where you can kind of do them all together. But uh, overall, I'm really excited about this. I think if this gets more people vibe coding and kind of playing with this stuff, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah. So what you're saying there um, actually really resonates. And also I'm not going to sort of like spill any, spill any secrets from my, from my meetings and things like that. But like the people who are like really amazing in this space, I won't share exactly what they're doing, but, but it's exactly that. And essentially like you take what your vision is and then all of a sudden you're like, hey, uh, you know, what would this look like in the future? Or if I, I have this idea, but, you know, all of a sudden you can do sort of like a, a minimum viable product of it. It reminds me like, you know, so I work with, um, you know, my guy, Robert Haslam, who's on my team, and he does a ton of vibe coding around all this stuff. And like to sort of like put in more basic terms, like he's like great on, you know, creating images, everything you see that I ever post on like LinkedIn, like he's created the graphics around that, all that sort of stuff. So I'll go on Canva because I know how to use Canva a little bit. And I'll just mock something of like super ugly. He's like, oh, that's what you mean instead of trying to describe it. And with vibe okay. coding, what I've sort of seen like best practice around this is like, you know, imagining an app where it kind of does this. And with vibe coding, like what I've seen people do, and Jaden, I think this is kind of like how you're referencing it as well, is like somebody like me, it's not that, so all of you folks who are like me, who like know that you can vibe code, <laughs> But you're like, ah, what am I supposed to vibe code or what should I be doing? Uh, what I see all the time, and again, like what my what my friends in this in this field are telling me a lot is like, it's not that you have to create a product that now all of a sudden everybody's going to use. Like you don't need to create that app that's going to sell for $10 million or something like that. What you want to do is if you are sort of like trying to build something out or have an idea or something like that, you just go in, you say it, and it starts to give you a sense of like what it could look like, how it can act, just again, that, you know, in writing, we call it the crappy first draft. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like getting a sense of this. And then Jaden, to your point, but you must be running in this in, in AI box all the time. Cause like, it's a software company. I've seen this stuff that you're building out, which even goes beyond what you're talking about here. It's really, really cool is for you when you're using sort of like these kinds of tools or when you people, when you know, people are doing it, like what's their like best practice like what's their best use case? is it that sort of like first draft or is it just sort of like hey this could be possible or how would this look or how do you guys think about it yeah i mean the way i think about it is like there's kind of a few different levels to using ai and, and to using a lot of these different tools the first one is kind of a rough draft but i think as you become better and better at using these tools um whether it's you know sort of like these app builders if you are if you're like if you're technical and if you learn enough you can just get it to do the whole thing for you. So I think uh, like when you talk about vibe coding with people with no experience, myself, like I could probably get some prototypes and some concepts and, and send it over to a developer to tie it all together. But if I am a developer and I'm really good, uh, you would just go to get something like Claude Code and you can quote unquote vibe code, but build full on apps. You understand how the backend works. You understand how the code base works. It just 10Xs how fast you are at actually uh, developing everything. Right. Yeah, which is awesome. And it's it's one of these things where, um, I'm not sure it's going to be like a moat for any company or anything like that, but I do think that more and more people sort of like having this in their hands 
it's it's like any technology you know what i mean like people couldn't do you know tons of math and all that kind of stuff before the calculator came along it just like starts to open up possibilities for just the normal person which i think is totally awesome and if you kind of like think about like just not to go way way back but like you know people who used to have to like typeset and things like that and then like the typewriter put like typing into the hands of like everybody it's i think that we are at this inflection point in technology which i think is like super fascinating um Jane, in the last two minutes, this uh, web guide from Google actually looks pretty cool. I think it's, I don't know if it's still in beta or prototype or something like that, but it looks like it's just sort of something that's helping you organize your searches better, which by the way, sounds small, but I think could actually be really interesting. Do you, have you sort of seen much about this? Yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, basically, I, I think a big part of the concept is just like, we are all used to, Google announced that there's 2 billion um, monthly active users that are seeing their AI snippets at the top. And I think we've all seen this. You've done the Google search. Now you kind of get an AI snippet at the oh, top. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But basically what's happening more and more is like when you do a Google search, you're kind of in, in a research mode. And sometimes when you ask a question, one answer doesn't really sum up everything in regards to that question. And Google's kind of understood this even pre-AI where they essentially you ask a question and it will have like a list of kind of these drop down follow up questions that you could ask. And they're very popular questions people click on. And I, I found myself do a search, you see like some of their suggested and you're like, okay, that's actually what I'm trying to ask. So Google now has it where essentially they have um, an AI summary that will be grouping different web pages. So we'll group them all together. Like these are kind of answering one of your questions and here's a summary for it. And they'll make multiple groups of uh, these like responses for you, groups of web pages and AI summaries that go along with them. So when you're doing your research, like beyond beyond just getting your little AI snippet at the top, uh, mm -hmm. you're getting your AI snippet for all your follow up questions you might have around that topic as well. So it's kind of a new, yeah, it's it's very very interesting. It's called the web guide. Yeah, this is what I think is cool, and 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 we and we can wrap on that. I just sort of like wanted to kind of like you know uh, you know dip our toe into that, but just. The cool thing about that is that these are all tiny little things that we are going to get used to very, very fast. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be one of these things where we're not going to be able to live without it soon. So it's just kind of like neat to see it on the front end. Uh, listen, guys, if you have enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to check out AIbox.ai. Uh, just test it out, man. You will sort of see right away, like, why are you spending money on every single other uh, app when you can just sort of like spend $20 on all of them? Super happy for Jaden that this is taking off. And leave us a rating and review. You guys are the best. We will see you next time.